Today is a beautiful day to speak my language at a TED Talk. Asiam, Isepu Elio, Misep Quetritlum, Tana Tamu, Antha Weyanuk, Tamana Stat Sathquia, Tanitsin A Kwantlin. So when people talk to me, I say, look, what does reconciliation mean to you? What does it mean to the Aboriginal peoples? And when they ask me that, I speak in my language at a TED Talk. That's a moment of healing. That's a moment of us taking another step forward. And that's another moment of us making our circle just a little bit bigger. I'm from Kwantlen First Nation, and we are located in Fort Langley, B.C. We've been living beside the Fraser River since the beginning of time, since time memorial, and um, my ancestors have been there for the first sunrise and the first sunset. So when we talk about moments of healing, those only come in small moments, right? doesn't happen all the time, but it's important to note that the trauma is still here. The trauma is still here for how we've been mistreated for way too long. And that um, a lot of us are still broken. A lot of us still hurt. A lot of us are depressed, um, sad, addicted. And some of us chose not to be here anymore. So it's important to acknowledge those small moments of healing, but also acknowledge that Kwantlen of the trauma is still there. When I think about Kwantlen, I, my hands go up to our hereditary chief, Marilyn Gabriel. When she received her hereditary chieftainship back in 1994, six months before her father passed away, he was hereditary chief, um, the first thing she did was reclaim our name back. So we were now known again as Kwantlen First Nation. Working in the school districts as an Aboriginal support worker, um, I know it would be incredibly embarrassing and just uh, degrading to me to go into the classroom and say, Anthawayanuk, Tanitsin, a Langley Indian Band, number six. So that was the name that the Canadian government gave to us as just one of the hardships that we've had to face. So reclaiming our name is a great thing, and our hands go up to Chief Marilyn for that. The second step was even more difficult. We had to, she had to ask the elders to come back. Imagine that, where the hardship is still there, the silence is still there, and people don't want to listen. So how are we going to ask the elders to come back when they're still broken, when they're still hurting, and they can't even deal with living with their own family members? They don't even know how to say, I love you, or I'm sorry, or that... They think it's their fault for the way they've been treated. So that was an incredible thing to have the elders come back and teach us, reteach us our culture that we lost, reteach us our language. And they had to learn how to love for the first time as an elder. And they had to share their story, which wasn't easy. They had to share their experiences so other people like us today could know what truly happened. We started with six elders when she asked them. Now we have 30 elders at our table running our community and all our business organizations and all our business enterprises. So our hands go up to Chief Marilyn and our elders. I'm here because they were strong enough to do that work. The next step was um, learning our cultural practices again learning how to regain our songs that we lost. And we had to make our visits to the river. Our hands go up to Chehalis, my family in Chehalis. This feather just came, this eagle feather just came from Chehalis just the other day. And the Chehalis, our family from Chehalis would, we would go to their smokehouse and do the winter dances over there and learn how to do the dances and know how to rehab ourselves to 
so that we can move forward and do the cultural work and spend time with our family. The next step was regaining our language. And that came with help from Musqueam, Huamakuyam. With the help from uh, Musqueam, we helped regain our language that we thought that was once going to be lost. But it's still here. And we know it's still here because it's being taught in the Langley School District. The Langley School District has their first ever Hunkaminam teacher, Fern Gabriel Sesmalat, teaching our language that we thought was once lost. So those are all small moments of healing that help us move forward. How to rebuild relationships. A very tough thing to do because we have to rebuild our relationships within our own family, right? I know some families can relate to their difficulties within their own families and knowing that everything's not the way it should be. But we have to rebuild relationships with our family, with ourselves, and then try to go out and say, and tell people that we're ready to share our teachings with you, share our culture with you, share our language with you. And when I think about all the moments of relationships that were rebuilt with Kwantlen and elder and non-native people, it wasn't instances that they came up to and said, hey, listen, we need to reconcile. Let's be friends again. Everything's going to be great. It doesn't work that way. So one moment I think about is a South Korean family. They had just moved from South Korea to Canada, and they were in Langley, Fort Langley, and they wanted to know the true history about the Aboriginal peoples of Canada. And uh, they came to our band office and asked uh, the people there, is there any cultural lessons, any teachings, any courses we can take? We really want to acknowledge and honor your family and the First Peoples of Canada, and we want to know about the true history. What can we do to learn this? And it just so happened that our language teacher was there in the band office, and she said, you should come to our language classes, which is every Monday night at our band office, and they've been learning our language with the elders and with our Kwantlen members and our Katsi members. And they're learning the language with us. So we thought it was an amazing experience. Not only is it the elders have come back, but people from different countries want to know about our little reserve. It warms our heart. And that's when you know a relationship is rebuilt right there is when, when that's developed over time and one that you don't rush. It's not something that you can measure. It's not something that um, you have high expectations of, of, of thinking about. And um, it just happened that way. And then during Christmas, they brought a whole bunch of care packages to our reserve. And um, just stuff that we need to get through life, right? because we know that some are going through a difficult and hard time, and just getting through life is hard enough. So they brought packages to the single mothers, the single fathers, the bachelors, and the elders. And when you see the look on the elder's face when they receive this care package, it's a moment in your life you're never going to forget. And when you see how the elders are healing and learning to love and knowing that other people care and are sincere and genuine, that's when you know a relationship is truly rebuilt. We need to listen to understand instead of listening to reply. I know it's a tough thing to be a part of because we're all using social media right now, right? I see it. Um, so we're in a moment where reconciliation means the, Aboriginal el the elders and the Aboriginal people have regained their voice. They regain their strength. They're proving that they're resilient. And we just need people to listen to understand instead of listening to reply, right? Because we know through social media and what happens on when CBC posted an article about uh, anything related to indigenous people, 
they have to block the comments because people feel the need to reply and let us know how they truly feel. So it's important that we listen to understand. And we think about social media. Social media is used by many, many people. Um, so there's that. The urban native versus the res native just adds more confusion and insight to what we think of as what reconciliation may be, right? And we're starting to find that a lot of members are starting to make their way back to their traditional territories, like myself and my mother. My mother's a residential school survivor. Um, and she left Fort Langley, she left Kwantlen at the age of 18. And she, we didn't come back. She didn't come back for another 48 years. So after that long time, and you're in your 60s and getting into your 70s, you have to relearn your culture for the first time, right? But you have to understand that there's certain protocols and certain teachings that we need to relearn. And we have to relearn our language. And for those who are trying to make their way home, and for their families who identified as not being Native, but they knew they were Native, and it was a secret. There's a time now where in the generation of reconciliation where we can be proud of who we are. We can be Kwam Kwam. We can be strong. We can say we're Native. I can come up and speak my language and in public and not get in trouble. And knowing that the government is not going to take me away from my mother and father. I'm the result of the government not taking me away. And look at the work I'm doing now. That's all thanks to the elders. But it's also key to note that those who are making their way home back, that the image that you have in your head is not going to be the same way of what's going to play out in life. And there's going to be difficult conversations to be had, and you need to be prepared for that. And know that the trauma is still there, but there are small moments of healing that help us move forward day by day. And when we say that, we all need to be part of the same circle. Urban natives, res natives, try to evaluate our expectations, learn our teachings, learn our language, learn that there's different protocols and different teachings in different communities, right? And um, this also has to do with non-Native people, too, with the rest of Canada. And to know that even though there's been hardship there, even though there's been a lot of belligerent things said, they're still allowed to be part of our circle, too. So when I think about the circle, we just got to do it, start with one small circle, and then make the other circle a little bit bigger. I think about an elder bringing us down to the Fraser River, throwing the rock in the Fraser River, and he says, what do you see? I see a rock in the river. He says, no. Look at the circle. Where the rock is, the circle's getting smaller, and there's other circles getting bigger and bigger. And that's what we need to do. So when we think about 150 years plus 150 plus, that's uh, the Canada Day celebrations coming up. We know that it's going to be some difficult conversations. Has not, everyone's not going to share the same view, right? And that there's going to be some upsetting things said. So we need to get pre be prepared for that. And that we know that for the Aboriginal peoples of Canada, when we think about 150 years, it's 150 years of pain for us. But we're trying to flip that forward. And... Uh, Celebrate now. Celebrate at a TED Talk. We want to celebrate our language. We want to celebrate our culture. We want to celebrate our teachings, but also know that there's some stuff that is just for my family. There's some stuff just for other families, right? So it's a time to celebrate. It's a time to honor the elders, our ancestors. It's a time to honor the Aboriginal people of Canada and my family. For an Aboriginal person, it's absolutely key to know where they're from. That's how they 
gain their prestige and status. And it doesn't matter if they're from Vancouver, BC, or Ottawa, Viscat. And so, Wayanuk, Tanitsin, Kwantlen. I am Wayanuk, and I am from Kwantlen. And I want to show you this video in a way to honor my family. This TED Talk is dedicated to the 6,000 children who never came home, my mother and our Kwantlen elders. Hey, Sepka. Hey, Sepka. All my relations. <laughs> 